In today's short video, I want to quickly take a look at the all new Microsoft lists. Now that, um, even though they started rolling out a couple of weeks ago, was eventually available in my tenant um, in last week. So very, very excited to share some news with you. There's uh, the Microsoft list site that tells you more about the app. You can go and look at the plans and pricing as well. And just uh, if you haven't figured that out yet, any subscriptions that includes SharePoint will automatically have Microsoft lists. So I have SharePoint, I'm very excited, but there's a lot of cool options. So let's take a look at how this is going to work. Now in Microsoft Teams, um, on any of the channels, you now have the ability to click on the Add tab and you're going to see there's the Lists uh, little icon. And if I click on Lists, now firstly, depending on whether you've used it on the team or not, you might have to allow using it first or install it. So um, let's just set that up. And once I've done that, it's going to ask me what I want to do. Do I want to add an existing list? So I can add an existing list that's already been built. Pretty cool. Or do you want to create a list from scratch? Now let's do that. You're going to see there that you can also create a blank list here from scratch. You can import it from Excel or from an existing list, of course. And of course, there's templates that you can use. And I think the templates are going to help a lot of people that are new to SharePoint that are not sure how columns, etc., and things work yet. Pros and cons to that, which means that if you don't know how SharePoint works, this is going to be great for you, but it's also not great that you don't know how SharePoint works. So I'm going to try my best to just give you an overview of that as well. So you can see here that it's got travel requests, so incidents, which is brilliant, asset manager, employee onboarding. I mean, how incredible is that? So let's take a look at the employee onboarding as an example. Now it's going to say that employee onboarding exists with the following columns. So it's got work, which is the steps that happens, the description, uh, completed by, so dates, whether it's completed, what date it's completed on, who's the person or the mentor, the relevant link, very interesting and very complex. I haven't seen all of this. And then it's uh, got a button at the bottom where it says, do you want to use this template? So let's go ahead and use that template. We're going to give it a name, employee onboarding. I'm going to leave it as is. You can give it a description as well. That's always a good idea. I'm going to make this a nice teal color and let's say employee onboarding. We're going to use the little ideas icon. So let's take a look at that. And that's pretty fast, by the way. I can build SharePoint lists very, very fast. I cannot build them that very fast. Okay. So once this list is built, um, you'll see that you've got the new item at the top, which means that you can start with a work statement to say that this is the next employee that needs to do so and so and so, the description, the completed details. So all of these fields are actually columns in a SharePoint list. And then you can add attachments as well and do pretty cool things. And of course, you can use Power Automate to further automate some of the things in the background, which is, of course, next steps for you. But if I look at this and I needed an extra column in there, for example, I mean, how, how would that work? So let's take a look at the SharePoint list behind it, because I think that's pretty important for you to understand as well. If I look at this list, there we go. It's the list that you can see in SharePoint normally. And if I click on the three dots there, you'll see that there's open in SharePoint. And I just want to very quickly talk about the SharePoint list and the details behind it. So you'll see that the view looks the same, the list looks the same, it's just now in SharePoint, because that's where it comes from. And also remember that it's built it on the SharePoint site collection for the team that you were on where you added the list. So remember that as well. From a membership or permissions, you have to build that list where people can access it. Don't mess around with permissions. I'm quite strict about things like that. So when I'm in SharePoint, I'm going to go and click on the settings wheel and I'm going to go to list settings. Now, when I'm in list settings, you'll see that here it actually gives me a list of all the columns that was created, which again, it was super fast. OK, so the columns were created. Let's take a quick look just at versioning settings. And this really just is an overview for you. So I want you to go and set the versioning settings up because it won't keep versions by default. So click that uh, keep versions. And the maximum number that you can keep these days is 50,000. So set up your versioning settings as well. And there you can see is the columns. So if you had to create another column, it would be quite simple. But the trick is I want to see if it actually brings it back into Teams. So let's take a look. If I wanted to create a column that says resources, so this is the resources the person needs, okay, when they start, for example. I'm just messing around with a list. So if I go to these, let's say they need parking and they need medical Oopsie, medical aid, Shoot, my spelling, 
and I need a access card. And these days, you don't know if people need a desk or an office anymore. Okay, an office, maybe I need an office. So there's some settings that I want to switch on as well that uh, people should fill in when the person starts. And I'm going to change it to check boxes so that they can select any one of those. So that's just an example. And I'm actually just doing a test to see whether it shows in the, um, sh the team side. Okay, so I might be wrong. I'm hoping it does. So if I've added the column, two things to understand is that on the little form that you fill in, there's a form order. So if I go new, you'll now see that field right at the bottom. There's resources. And if you wanted it to be higher up, you have to change it. Yeah. So if I go to the list settings and I look at the columns, you'll see that there is column ordering. So this is where I can go and change resources to be number three, for example. Now I know that this might not make sense on the specific list, but just uh, let's wing it. Okay. And then also, of course, um, the list has views. So if I look at the list settings again, the Microsoft list is pre-created views for me, which is pretty cool. Group by work by completed date, group by completed status, work to be completed, and you'll see that all items is the default view. So on all items, it would be important to see what it does with that specific column. So you'll see that resources shows last there. Ah, normally I don't mess with uh, my default views, but there is other views created. So when that's the only view that I have, I normally don't mess with it. But uh, let's, uh, because there's multiple views, I'm going to just change that ordering. And this is the ordering that I'm talking about now in Teams. So let's uh, let's look at what it does about uh, in Teams. Okay, I'm quite interested to see if it actually changes it when I go back to Teams as well, because that might be a challenge. Nope, there we can see resources. Now let's see if we go new item. Mm -hmm. And it's added resources. Well done, Microsoft. I was very worried that this specific form that it opens, because it's slightly customized, would not show that specific field that I've just added. So there's a very, very quick uh, down and dirty little... Uh, video for you to understand that Microsoft lists of course are incredible but if you had to make a small change and that was done very fast so slow down my video and I think I might be showing some more cool things around uh, Microsoft lists this has really opened up the world for me for people that aren't SharePoint developers to be able to do really cool things um, as well and remember you can also set up a Power Automate in the background to say, hey, if this happens, then do that. And if this happens, do that. So I hope that you enjoy Microsoft Lists and we'll definitely uh, play around with this a little bit more in future. Catch up soon.